Investors find it difficult to evaluate risks in the face of the looming default. On the one hand, the fundamentals benefit the stock market, and on the other hand, investors sense that something is brown. So they want to play safe. Apart from the default uh, premonition, Wall Street is still fretted about the banking crisis. The benchmark indexes traded mixed on Thursday. The Dow Jones went down after World uh, Disney shares, the banking sector and the energy companies. The Nasdaq found support from high-tech giants. The Dow Jones closed in the red, having lost 0.66%, the Nasdaq state of load and closed 0.18% up. The S&P 500 slipped by 0.17% to close at 4,130 points. The pre-market on Friday was more optimistic. The major stock indexes traded higher in sync. Futures on the stock indexes gained 0.2 and 0.3%. The S&P 500 is expected to trade in the interdecade between 4,110 and 4,190 points. Yesterday, the economic calendar was our secondary importance for the stock market. The economic data benefited to rally. U.S. producer prices grew weaker than expected. The annual factory inflation eased for the 10th months straight to the lowest level since January 2021. Besides, the number of initial jobless claims increased sharply by 22,000 last week. It's a good omen for the market. At the same time, optimism was dampened. The Dow Jones and the S&P 500 were affected by a decline in Walt Disney and PacWest. The Nasdaq stayed in the green thanks to Alphabet. Walt Disney shares slumped by 8.7%. Though the company reported a quarterly profit in line with their expectations, the number of subscribers to its flagship service, Disney Plus, went down. PacWest shares plummeted by 22.7% yesterday after the company lost 9.5% of deposits last week and um, it provided extra security to the Federal Reserve to increase its own liquidity. Around 113 of the country's largest lenders will bear the cost of um, replenishing the $16 billion to the U.S. Federal Deposit Insurance Corporations Fund caused by recent bank failures. Stocks of other regional banks also fell as the news revived fears about the health of the banking sector. The index of regional banks lost 2.4%. The energy sector in the S&P 500 was hurt by foreign oil prices. Tesla shares jumped in the late session after Elon Musk tweeted that the he had found a new CEO. Tesla's growth was the catalyst for optimism on Wall Street on Friday. Tesla shares added 2.15% in the New York pre-market. The main drag on the Wall Street is the debt ceiling issue and the prospects of a technical default. Analysts are again speculating on a recession amid the painstaking talks on the debt ceiling and the bank bows. The meeting between Joe Biden and lawmakers is delayed until next week because both parties are focused on the proposals about spending cuts. The default issue was high on the agenda at the G7 Summit of Finance Ministers held in Japan. Germany's finance minister pinned hopes on a major decision by the US policymakers and warned of a grave uh, repercussions for the global economy. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen underscored uncertainty about the date of June 1, when the US government will run out of cash. Bank shares come down in light of the announcement by the Federal De Deposit Insurance Corporation 
On the commitment of 113 large lenders, stocks of PacWest, Zeons and Western Alliance snapped a four-day losing streak and rebounded by 1 and 4.4 percent. Moreover, the market is still propped up by the disinflation signs, decent corporate reports and a strong performance of high-tech stocks driven by the success of artificial intelligence. The market sentiment today will depend on the consumer sentiment survey by the University of Michigan for May and remarks by the Fed policymakers such as the Mary Daly, Philip Jefferson and James Bullard. And the stock market is in a wait and see mood. Meanwhile, the currency market is coming back to uh, life after yesterday's so jitters. Having climbed by 0.2%, the US dollar index is trading at 102.20. Its into the Canada is seen between 101.70 and 102.50. Thanks to its rally on the Thursday, the US dollar is closing the week with the strongest gain since February. It's on a track to close the week with a growth of 0.9%. Despite a rapid rally, the overall trend for the greenback is still bearish. Its index has dropped by more than 11% since it conquered a 20-year peak last year. The index closed the seven recent weeks with the losses. Analysts expect the Federal Reserve to maintain interest rates at 5 and 5.25 percent after a final rate hike announced last week. This viewpoint is reinforced by fresh data on the labor market. Despite the highly anticipated pose, the US dollar benefited this week from its status of a safe haven asset. The greenback was also supported by Fed's policymakers. Michelle Bowman said that the central bank would have to raise interest rates higher if inflation remains elevated. She noted that the CPI for April did not convince her of an inflationary pressure. All in all, despite the strong belief in the uh, Fed's post, the US dollar is taking advantage of a looming slowdown in the global economy. The burning issue was discussed at the G7 summit. The Canadian dollar is taking a breaker uh, after a roller coaster on Thursday. The used card per traded sideways in the midday uh, at about 1.3488. The instrument is likely to trade in the intraday Canada between 1.3450 and 1.3520. Wind down by the greenbacks at once, the loony is a losing ground on the back of a protracted decline in oil prices. Both benchmark rates are expected to close the week in the red because concern about energy demand in the top global economies resurfaced in the market. Nevertheless, bettered brand futures rebounded by 0.8% to $75.90 a barrel. WTI futures recovered by 1% to trade at $71.59. The decline in oil prices was stemmed by the statement from the U.S. Energy Secretary. The Energy Department could start repurchasing oil for the Strategic Petroleum Reserve after completing a congressionally uh, mandated sale next month. APEC maintained its forecast for global oil demand for 2023 because economic risks could be offset by high demand in China. In the crypto market, Bitcoin forgot about its direct correlation with the NASDAQ and focused on its opposite correlation with the US dollar index. As a result, Bitcoin fell to $26,297, the lowest level in eight weeks. The flagship crypto traded quietly in the red at midday. The price settled at $26,300 or 2.4% down. Popular altcoins traded mixed today. Ethereum and Litecoin shed 1.7%. Solana, Ripple and Cardano gained 0.2 and 1.8 percent. Bitcoin lost uh, as much as 10 percent in the last few days, despite cooling inflation. A revival in the high-tech sector and the alien banking sector.
traders neglected the factors which used to fill crypto optimism. The UK tax authority proposed a bill to establish the right to size bitcoins from a company which violate the tax obligations on a cryptocurrency. Currently, the government is considering options of a granting the tax authority access to online wallets. The leader of the European Banking Authority said that central banks should wait a stable coins if they fear that private and illegal blockchains might threaten monetary policies. The authorities are going to develop legislation on the crypto markets in a few months. Bitcoin settled at 26,300 trying to rebound, and the token could trade in a narrow range between 26,200 and 27,000 dollars. A breakout of the borders could lead to the crypto to 25,450 or 27,750 dollars, and the pivot point today is at 26,800 dollars. Keep close tabs on this level to determine a trajectory. So make profit with the InstaForex, subscribe to our channel and have a nice weekend. See you on Monday.